It's still the breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Now to our second, our first conversation, I beg your pardon. The National Assembly has declared that the most potent threat to the forthcoming 2023 general elections is the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, uh, through its badly implemented Naira redesign policy. Well, the legislative arm of government made this known at a one-day special hearing on the extent of implementation of Electoral Act of 2022 ahead of the conduct of the 2023 general elections that was held in Abuja. The lawmakers added that the current narrow redesign policy could affect negatively the conduct of the forthcoming polls while responding to comments by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, which expressed fear over unending violence against its facilities in some parts of the country. Uh, Senator Ukwemi Bamidele of the APC in Ekiti State's uh, to be very precise, Ikiti Central, said that going by the problems of acute Naira scarcity faced by many Nigerians, the CBN is the most outstanding threat to the elections. He said the plan of selectivity of cash withdrawal uh, of, for INEC worked out with the CBN was not assured as far as smooth conduct of the elections uh, should be considered. He said the policy is not affecting the ordinary man on the streets as they are suffering. They're sleeping in the banks, uh, banking halls, the ATMs, and don't have access to their money. Uh, we must understand the political economy of the electoral process. We'll just leave it at that. A lot has been, has been said by the National Assembly and her members and all the Nigerians, but we have Ambrose Iboke, who is a public affairs analyst. He joins us from Enugu. Uh, Ambrose, it's good to have you join us. Good morning and uh, happy Friday. Good morning. There's nothing to be happy about. <laughs> Oh well, oh oh well. You know, you know how it is that is said that you know in the midst of confusion, you just have to uh, maintain a positive attitude. I mean, maybe we should just do that. Uh, well, let's get to the crux of the conversation. The National Assembly is quoted to say that uh, they are saying that the CBN and her badly implemented policy is the most eminent threat to the 2023 general elections. I mean, do you agree with this school of thought? Well, there's no school of thought about that because we see mm. uh, the INEC chairman uh, some uh, days ago expressed that fear. Uh, the logistics for election is a multi, you know, million, if not billion naira operation. The IMEC materials have to be moved to the last one in the across the Sahel. It has to be moved back to the last one across the creeks. It has to move across to forest to the last word. It has to circulate to every nook and cranny of this country because no Nigerian will be disenfranchised. Because of that, it costs of moving INEC logistics for election is very high. And the most of these logistics are operated by payment in cash because INEC makes use of the ordinary transport modes. For example, in the past, they made the use of National Union for Road Transport Workers, uh, transport unions, uh, boats, you know, union people who do boats in the creeks and other logistics. So cash is needed. Apart from the INEX side, the citizens need cash to move. The NUC in the news has just requested or directed that the vice chancellors of Nigerian universities should allow the students go home for three weeks to fully participate in the elections. How will they move if there's no movement uh, occasioned by lack of uh, Naira? So there's a lot gamut of issues. There are some banks that are closed. I will still start mentioning names of banks now. A bank has the temerity to say they have closed the operations nationwide just yesterday. So, and unfortunately, and one of those who own banks with that bank. So my money is trapped there. 
what we don't even know the after effect of this kind of thing. Many Nigerians, because of this action, has, have lost faith in the banking system. So people will keep their money at home. The banks will suffer. The after impact of this action, in the next six months to one year, the banks will suffer severely. Depositors will reduce. Because you can't, you can't, you know, make people this disappointed. You make people lose faith in the system. And you want them to come back to you. So the election is being threatened. I never can say it. And then the CBS response to that was so elementary that INEC chairman should come and they will avail INEC chairman all the funds he needs to run the election. Who talks that way? I was going to get to that, uh, you know, because I think that's the concern that the likes of Senator uh, Bami Dele had raised, uh, the selective availability of cash to INEC, because the CBN, which is the Apex Bank, has assured that the umpire of her readiness to make cash available to them, and uh, that's not going to be a problem. So, what do you make of the selective availability of cash to the umpire? I, shows, I mean, they can, shows, they would have money. <laughs> That's what it means. shows. People who are very coordinated. If the CBM management was a private institution, the shareholders, the board of directors would have sacked those people. The management by now. This is gross incompetence. Does it, I mean, does it even sound logical and, uh, you, you, you know, to say this kind of thing? So, you are telling me that if the, if the, if the military makes uh, money for logistics to continue the war of terror, you give them money. If uh, the health workers need money, you give them money. Is that how you run a country? Is this a cooperative society? Even a cooperative society does not run that way. Uh, Ambrose, uh, I, I also like to ask you to show your thoughts on this one quickly. Uh, it's about, you know, the, the Supreme Court's ruling. We know that it's uh, on a temporal basis, and that's temporal. But it's also expected that the CBN should uh, obey this. But however, the CBN has also been quiet as regards this. Now, it leaves a lot of people wondering what it should be. We know that the, Subri, uh, the Supreme Court is the highest court of the land, and whatever, I stay, whatever he says, whether or not it, it's, you know, it's right in its delivery of its ruling or judgment, whatever it is, is expected that the ruling should be respected. But the CBN is silent. And then the federal government, on the other hand, is saying, we will back you know, this uh, order, however it is. What exactly should we expect as we inch closer to the elections? I don't know what the CBN is planning. By now, they are supposed to have made a statement. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the land, so you cannot ignore the Supreme Court. And the CBN, by this act, is showing disrespect to the highest court in the land. A simple press statement would have been issued after advice of the legal department and from the attorney general. But even the attorney general, you know, have been, criti been criticizing the uh, Supreme Court and they're asking them to vacate uh, the judgment, I mean, the ex parte order. So what is happening now is that everybody, and let me use what we, uh, the, the language we use downtown, everybody is flexing muscles. You know, everybody is being tough, and you can't tell me what to do. If you behave that way, then it's a banana republic. There must be order. There must be principle. You see, so the CBA did not admit that to cherry pick the judgment if you obey and the judgment if you not obey. No matter how flawed the judgment is. Or whatever anybody thinks the judgment is, Supreme Court is the highest court of the land and must be obeyed. Now, today is set, the day that was set for 
this uh, deadline. The CBN and remain mute three days after a judgment has been issued. This is very, very disrespectful to the Supreme Court and to the Nigerian citizens. So I don't know who, who is giving the, Supreme, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria this kind of advice, but we are veering towards a dangerous path. Well, um... What some schools of thought have said that the CBS is, is you know, deliberately stalling so that by Wednesday, they will know whether to move forward or backward. So they have refused to issue statements to say the deadline is, uh, you know, uh, is extended. But however, whether the deadline is extended or not, Nigerians are still in the same quack buyer because the banks are not sure of what to do. Commercial banks are confused. They are confusing them. They don't know whether to issue the old Nara notes again. They don't know if to collect. So you are just confusing everybody. What kind of people plan this way? Ambrose, I'd like to ask you if, you know, the CBN and her policy that is badly implemented, I mean, I'm quoting the words of the National Assembly now, is the only threat to the 2023 general elections. Well, well, well I, I, as I said earlier, if this issue is not sorted out, the 2023 general election, as latest for 26 January, is on that threat. That fact has been made very clear by the INEC chairman. So the question now remains, are there people trying to scuttle this election? No, no, I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure you got my question. I'm saying if we go by, you know, the statement of uh, the National Assembly, and which was also corroborated by uh, the umpire's chairperson, uh, is the CBN or the CBN's policy the only threat to the 2023 elections? Well, that is a major threat. The CBN actions in the last one month is a major threat to the 2020 election as it stands today. So, so what happens because to it's like the blood? What happens to the attacks on INEC facilities, all of the insecurities uh, that we're faced with, including the pockets of protest and cures and lack of order in different states? The great you ask that what is the major threat? Of course, we have been other threats we have been battling with. You know, uh, staccato attack on uh, INEC uh, facilities. And, uh, but INEC has always come to say that uh, the activities are safe and the diverse machines are not uh, affected. Now, but the monumental threat to the election is this CBN action. Others are threats, but in proportion, they are not as threatening as this one. All right, so as we close the conversation down, I'd I like you to give your, your words. Uh, you know, if you had the opportunity to be face to face, let's assume that's what you have now with the CBN governor and everyone involved in the situation, what exactly would you say? I don't think I, I, I want to send it to the city and governor. But I should speak with the president. It's either to call the city and governor to order or sack him. Because we can't continue this way. If I call on Nigerians, I have access to the president to please appeal to the president to do something about it. When you talk about is the, is the CBS, the GSS, is the CBS the police, is the CBS the report, the report unit that is uh, want to use money to stop politicians from uh, from much buying, is that your work? You you place a policy of cash withdrawal limit. I can certainly take care of that. Then you come back and you're suffering like a uh, random man in the street. The modern man in the street. Who wants to buy food for his family? Is it doing what is it doing what time? The small businesses you have killed. Do you know how many small businesses have been shut down the last two weeks? And you are telling me about what time. I have nothing to say to the Nigerian government. Except that Nigerians should 
who have access to the president to plead, plead with the president to call the Sudan governor order. No, but I also like to ask if you think that um, the federal government is saying they would obey, you know, the ruling of the Supreme Court, and that's what it is. But do we necessarily need the CBN to uh, make any statements before we go ahead? Yes, we need the CBN to make a statement, and the statement should be: if commercial bank or if Nigeria should still guard the old notes as legal tender. That instruction needs to come from, from, the, uh, from the CBN, the deposit bank, because CBN is the regulator. Wow. That also will assure Nigerians to collect the money as legal tender. But CBN is required to construct the declaration by the, by the Supreme Court so that they'll sit out and wait to Wednesday. They are putting the whole country into confusion. What happened today over the weekend and it's Wednesday? I'm just wondering yeah, that... They're actually knocking down the economy. I, I'm just wondering. I mean, we know that the uh, Supreme Court of Nigeria or the Supreme Court is the, you know, uh, the highest court of the land and her ruling should be supreme and be obeyed uh, to the latter. Uh, so can we Nigerians just go ahead and spend this money? without having to wait for the CBN's directive? We have institutions. We have laws that govern this land. Not a banana republic. It was not the Supreme Court that told commercial banks to stop collecting, uh, to stop uh, uh, this issue of bank notes, new old, old notes, swap, and other things. It was the agency elected by the Constitution to regulate that sector, that said it. Now the Supreme Court has talked to the, uh, the regulator to say, allow this thing. Now, has there been a directive or memo to commercial banks? Because we are talking about you know, transactions with banks. The POS, whoever is the uh, POS operator, the citizen that is selling the market, wants a statement from the regulator. Well, I, I mean, f fingers are very crossed. There are several questions. So it, it means that if any citizen at this point, you go ahead to spend the old note, you would be acting in uh, contravention of the law. Is that what it means? Ambrose. Okay. Okay. I, I was really hoping that he answers it. And this is a question that a lot of Nigerians are you know, hoping to get answers. What becomes of the people if you go ahead to spend the old note? Today's the 10th of February. Uh, if you spend the old note, are you acting uh, contrary to the laws that have been given? I mean, whose reports then should we believe, especially when the CBN is silent? That's the size of a conversation this morning on The Breakfast. We quickly take a break. When we return, we'll be talking sports. Amber Sigboke has been our guest, a public affairs analyst, all the way from Inugu. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Please stay with us. Good morning.